In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a couple of problems you could run into if you're going to replace your garage rafter ties with ceiling joists. And that will be the fact that you actually need larger boards. And these larger boards are going to encroach into your roof space. You don't want them sticking through the roof, so they're going to need to be tapered down, as you can see in this illustration here. And it is going to provide us with a concern. And I'm actually going to refer to this point as the line of concern. This will be the farthest point, or I should say the closest point, where the joist will be sitting on top of the wall. So you can see here that it's the farthest bearing point. Now, first thing we're going to need to do is take the width of the ceiling joist, and let's just say I'm just going to use an 8 inch board that's actually 8 inches wide to make things simple. And we will divide the ceiling joist into quarters. This would be four sections of two inches each. And as you can see here, that's what we have done. Well, you cannot remove more than one quarter of the width or height, I should say, of the ceiling joist. But the good news is it's not going to be at the end of the board. It's not going to be at the section that's even with the face of the wall, the exterior wall. It's going to be our line of concern. This is where the measurement will be. And you can see this is actually what I did. I figured out where it was going to be, took one quarter of the distance and cut it. And of course, it's sticking up which is uh, one of the reasons why I made the video. It's an existing situation that could be a problem. So with an existing situation, we have an existing roof, existing rafter sizes we're dealing with, then this could be a problem. We might need to look for another alternative. Um, and you can actually reduce the size of the ceiling joist and space them closer together. I'm going to try and put together another video. This is going to be a video series here. I'm going to try and put together a video series to give you a better idea. So let's just say that you might be allowed to use 2x10s, um, but you space them 24 inches on center, 2x8s, 16 inches on center, and 2x6s, 12 inches on center. So if you have uh, options like this, you're going to need to look into them. But this is something I want you to think about. Just don't jump in and cut these ceiling joists to fit without understanding that you could be affecting the strength of the ceiling itself. Now, there are a few things you can do, but one of them would be, let's just say, if you notch the bottom of the ceiling joist. And you can't just notch the bottom of the ceiling joist and uh, leave it like this. This is a big no-no. But you can actually put a support board underneath it. And this support board would need to be fastened securely to the wall with lag bolts, I would imagine. And here's kind of an idea of what I'm talking about, kind of like a ledger. And this would actually change the line of concern. Remember, this term is not a construction term. I'm just using it to make uh, things simple or easier in the video to understand. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This right here would be our line of concern without the ledger. But with the ledger, we actually move the line over. And you can see we're not just gaining the, by moving it over, not just gaining a little height, we're also gaining a little distance on the bottom. And if we needed to notch an inch out of the bottom, we've just gained an inch by moving it over. Now, there is something I really need to point out here. This is just a something that I'm suggesting. It is does not mean that you'd be allowed to do this. You need to check with a structural engineer and your local building department um, before doing it. You could always build a wall underneath it. Something like that would work as long as it was on a footing, something that was supporting it. Um, but other than that, you only have a few options here and should watch more of the videos to actually see what they are. Last but not least, don't forget to check out some of our home book packages. I put together some of our books so that you don't have to buy them individually and get a better deal this way. This is great for do-it-yourselfers. And if you're a contractor, don't forget to check out our book 501 Contractor Tips.